Shantae, and this is the Bring a Folding Chair series. BAFC is a talk series where guests come together to discuss diverse topics and the importance of bringing all seats to the table. Today's topic is love languages, writing with care, and our special guest is Bryn Evans, pronouns she, her. Bryn, I am super glad that you are here with us, so I'm going to tell the audience a little bit about yourself, a little bit about you. So Brent Evans is a writer and arts worker based in Decatur, Georgia. She situates her work within Black feminist theory and performance with a focus on Southern Black geographies and vernacular poetics. Evans earned her Bachelor's of Arts in African American and African Diaspora Studies and Art History from Columbia University. I'm so glad that you are here, Bryn. And for our audience, we're going to switch up our usual Bring a Folding Chair video format and do something new. Bryn brought her folding chair and has prepared a wonderful presentation for us to enjoy. So, Bryn, take it away. Thank you so much, Shantae. Hello, everyone. My name is Bren Evans. I'm an arts worker based in Decatur, Georgia. And today we're going to be doing a writing workshop for writers um, to both focus and strengthen your own practice, but also take some time to self-reflect, um, to pour into ourselves as we celebrate writing and also celebrate Black woman writers. And so this is a poetry workshop for self-compassion to practice writing with intention and care. So a little about me, I'm a writer and arts worker based in Atlanta, Georgia. I currently work at Burn Away, a magazine that centers cultural criticism and arts criticism from the American South. Um, my Instagram is included there and you can support me and my work via Cash App, Venmo and PayPal at the different handles listed below. And so now we're gonna begin a guided meditation um, because I'm joining you remotely today. In light of this virtual presence, I want to do what I can to help us be fully present during this workshop. One way to do that is by practicing mindfulness through a guided meditation. Research has helped show that positive impacts of mindfulness include helping us reduce stress and improve our resilience to stress in the long run. It can also help improve our mental health. When I was in college, I finally realized the power of meditation and mindfulness um, because stress was negatively impacting me, my happiness, my relationships, and my experience um, on this earth. <laughs> um, and so one of my offerings to you today to help you experience the impact of meditation um, that it can have on you, wherever you are at in your journey. So for the next five minutes, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes, listen, and relax. All I ask is that you be open and respectful. And I promise to do the same for you. And so without further ado, Let's begin. Hello. Wherever you are, I invite you to take a deep breath. Inhale in through your nose and hold. Exhale out through your mouth. Indulge this instinct. Throughout this experience, this breath, your own internal rhythm will be asked of, engaged, and grounded as you encounter a series of scores on your own time and on your own terms. Thank you for devoting your energy to an intentional act of self-recovery. There are no goals or objectives here, only response. I empower you to honor your responses to this exercise by adjusting the scores as needed, by creating moments of pause as needed, by distancing yourself from the meditation as needed. I invite you to use these words as a guide, never a rule. 
Only you possess the knowledge to recognize what you are able to give to or take from this meditative practice. With that, even if you are able to do so, the power that facilitates this transfer of energy is self-controlled, meaning that you are the ultimate transactor. In this moment, the only obligation you have is to the self. You are fostering a space of self-sovereignty. If during this time, any thread of words resonates with your body or spirit, I encourage you to hold it, to acknowledge it, and then to let it go. In your space, critical engagement is not judgment, but participation. You have the agency to dictate what you will or will not give energy to. This is your experience. Now I want you to take notice of your space. If you are sitting, what is supporting you? How does it feel? The option to change your seating, to move as informed by your body is always available to you. Observe what your other senses tell you about the place you are occupying. Take notice of how your body feels within it. Are you experiencing relaxation, tension, peace, guilt? This is a reminder that your perspective of the external environment is directly affected by your relationship to your internal environment. If they are open, I invite you to close your eyes as you begin an exercise grounded in sensation. Again, inhale in through your nose, exhale out through your mouth. Take moments to breathe, to remember that you are here. Take more moments than you expect. Be greedy. Allow yourself overindulgence as you take moment to breathe. Consider where you exist without apology, where your truth and your reality are most similar. When do you experience embrace? Who or what have you deemed worthy of touch? There are times when your body may seem as if it was not your own, perhaps because of the ways that others treat your body or mistreat your body, perhaps because of the ways that you treat your body or mistreat your body. The sticky thing, the beautiful thing, is that you are not your body, but so much more. That your body in its limits and its possibilities is a vessel through which you experience the world. And I am one to believe that if this vessel were to open up, you would emanate out into the earth like morning dew, a profound fog, sunlight, desert sand, or a long-awaited rain. But this vessel allows incredible things and deserves protection to be listened to. Remember your breath. Eyes open or closed, seeing still, if the walls of your space were love, what colors would they be? What materials, how do they feel? Are there walls at all? How wide would they be? Windows or mirrors, paper or paint? If the ground of your space were love, how deep would it go? What is its texture? Wet soil, carpet, a tile floor, water? If the ceiling were love, how high would it reach? Does it have a limit? Perhaps your space, what you have thought of, which is true because it is yours, is not a physical space like a room, but actual space like a galaxy. Perhaps your space can fit within the palm of a hand on the tip of a tongue. Perhaps your space is painted white or brown or red. Perhaps your space the one you have created just now is a greenhouse, a growing love. 
whatever it is, inhale. Exhale out through your mouth, a breath so large it makes the space move. Channel participation, refuse judgment right now. Recognizing response is important. You deserve to feel your body and your body deserves to be felt. Now, how might you love more intentionally? Experience love more intentionally. Stay there for a moment. Feeling the love. In this here place, we flesh. Flesh that weeps, laughs. Flesh that dances on bare feet in grass. Love it, love it hard. Your eyes, your skin, your hands, your mouth, you have got to love it. We're talking about flesh. Flesh that needs to be loved. Feet that need to rest and to dance. Backs that need support. Your neck, love your neck, put a hand on it, grace it, stroke it, and hold it up. And all your inside parts, love them. The dark, dark liver, love it. Love it in the beat, beating heart, love that too. More than eyes or feet, more than lungs that have yet to draw free air more than your life holding womb and your life giving private parts. Hear me now. Love your heart, for this is the prize. When it is difficult, I ask you to return to the site of love. Breathing in. And exhaling out. When you're ready, open your eyes. And so now we're going to do a short reflection to see where we're at after all of that. I included a couple quotes to get you going. The first is simple. How was it? What did you notice about your body or your breath as we went through the meditation? Did any specific moment or phrase stick out to you? And then consider where you exist without apology, a quote from the guided meditation. Is there a place or space where you don't have to apologize for being yourself? How do you feel when you're there? If there isn't a place, imagine it. What is it like there? And lastly, if the walls of your space were love, create the space through words or drawing. What does it look like? What can you hear there? Be as descriptive as possible with respect to your own lived experience. So I'm gonna put some music on and turn off my camera and I'll be back in about five minutes. We're gonna move forward with this workshop. Thank you.
Okay, thank you so much for participating in that. Um, to participate myself, I'll say, if the walls of my space were love, I do kind of imagine this like gigantic open air, like arboretum or like, like botanical garden of like all these plants and it's kind of warm and like the air is clinging to your skin a little bit um, and it's green and just like full of oxygen. Um, and there might be like a bird or two or something. I think for me, that's um, what love looks like right now for me. So let's move on. So now we're gonna watch an excerpt from Beloved, um, the amazing film based off the amazing book by Toni Morrison, starring you know Oprah and so many other amazing actresses. In this scene, um, Seth, the main character, recalls the past sermons of her mother-in-law, Baby Suds, to the enslaved folks of the Sweet Helm Plantation in Kentucky. These sermons took place in the clearing, which is the area you see on the screen now. A cleared area of a nearby forest where black people were able to join together without the oversight of their white enslavers. And so with this video, I want you to watch Baby Suggs gather the people in this video. And you might remember that I included some of the words um, in my own guided meditation, the love it hard, your heart is the prize, um, as a direct quote from this movie, from this scene. And so I just wanna share it with you all in case you didn't get that reference. And also just so you can see the oratorical mastery of Baby Suggs in this position. She's a stunning, absolutely, one of the most powerful characters, I think, in Toni Morrison's repertoire. So I want to share this with you. Um, yeah, let's go ahead. Oops. I'm trying to play it. Dang, Hamse, I'm like freezing. Okay, here we go. Holly bought baby Sooks his freedom, but slavery done already busted her legs, and busted her back, her hands, her everything. When she come here, she ain't had nothing left to make no living with, besides her heart. Baby Sooks used to preach right here. Let the children come. <laughs> Let your mothers hear you laugh. <laughs> Let the grown men come. Let your wives and your children see you dance.
I really, really love Bea Richard. She reminds me, at least um, her appearance reminds me so much of my grandmother's mother. Um, and so looking at her reminds me of her because I wasn't able to meet her um, in my life. Um, and so yeah, we're gonna move on again, another reflection activity. So, like before, these prompts are inspired by different quotes from baby subs um, and from the idea of being in community, community, being in love, what love looks like in community, um, what love looks like across generations, across genders. Um, so the first quote is love it hard. Baby Suggs is consistent about the way in which the people should love hard. Who and what do you love hard? Can you think of someone who loves you hard? What makes their love feel that way? And deeply love. Dream of a world where you did things you loved every day. Map out a day in your life of loving. And you gotta love it, you. In this sermon, Baby Sucks champions a victorious self-love. What are actions that you take to practice self-love or self-compassion? How often do you do them? When did you last hug yourself or give yourself care? What makes you feel nurtured? And then flesh that weeds. On the other side of loving hard is hard love or being hardly loved, unhealthy or unsupportive attachment. If it feels okay, reflect on the last time you cried or felt like crying. And then also you can write down a sentence or two to encourage your past self and receive the encouragement of your community members. And so I'm going to put back on some music and you can choose any one of these prompts and then we're going to move on from there. Thank you. The skies fall, not even what you call the world seems very small. Does nothing even matter at all? Seems nothing even matters. Seems nothing even matters at all. Nothing even matters. Nothing even matters at all. These buildings out to see. Terrible catastrophe. Still, there's no place I'd rather be. Cause nothing even matters to me. See, nothing even matters. See, nothing even matters to me. Nothing even matters. Nothing even matters. I sometimes have a tendency to look at you and it's sleep. I even matter to me. Nothing even matter. Nothing even matter to me. 
Okay, so again, thank you for participating in that free write with me. Um, I'll share my response to deeply love um, of a day of doing things I love. I will wake up early and see the sunrise with a devotional and a nice cup of tea with honey. Then I would head to the gym or studio or just like for a nice long walk. I'll feel the next day. Um, then lunch with my family, maybe outside on a patio. Um, after that, some afternoon writing and more time being outside. Then a date night with my boyfriend. And then an early night in after a candlelit bath. It's very romantic. <laughs> it's very um, lush, <laughs> I will say. That's probably like a very nice, um, comforting day of doing things that I love. Okay, so next we're gonna do a reading of my work. Today I'm gonna read to you two poems um, that I've written in different times of my life. Um, one is 
I mean, I think they're both about being daughters. What does that mean? Um, what does it mean to daughter oneself? What does it mean to be a daughter? Um, what is life like a daughter? Like, how do you continue legacy? How do you honor your mothers? Where do you find mothers? Um, well, yeah, today we're gonna do um, a short little poetry reading. The first is called, Let Me Show You My Soil. Mabu, Mubu, Mu. Black art, mover, moving, moved. Dark silt, slip from mothers. We fissure a promise of coal, blooming. Diaspora walk on water, jump the water, swim through water, pack in water, blessed insurance. Bless the boats, burn the boats, seize the boats. Boats become prisons. High water, come draw a large circle next to a small one. Piles of kindred loam, born from local source, compressed into cubic island, fault lines emerge. Fools dug, sovereignty could be a handful of earth in our palms, a raging portal in the throat. No borders, just ash out of a fire. We speak like Pentecostal. My tongue lick Jasper, my mouth moan how light. Let me show you my soul. Let me build a mound alive enough for prayer. Words tumble from my fingers, ask questions only touch can answer. Where is, who was? Did, how come, why? Land from, from land, a pocket of mulch, stolen. The gaping nation, stolen, that leaves the message hollow and wrong and nevertheless understood. Hollow, absorb the air's tension, return it to the earth, it will break into song and loose history, daughter of dust, scorch ocean into dirt. We who ruin ritual form self from clay. The next poem is untitled, but I refer to it as my mom. And it's after Sonia San Sanchez's poem, Present. And it's kind of sandwiched in between two excerpts from that poem. And so the first words I say and the last words I say are Sonia. And I dance my creation in my grandmother's gathering. From my bones like great wooden birds spread their wings while their long-legged laughter stretches the night. And I taste the seasons of my birth, mangoes, papayas, drink my woman coconut milks, stalk the ancient grandfather sipping on proud afternoons. I respond. My mama sings sweet tea, pour into kitchen window. Orchids like nectar, rain bless the morning with honey brew. Hear her hums through walls, thin as shed leaves, runs round the staircase. Her hymns, brown babies, birth bulbs, bloom buds black as sugar cane. Mama's music coats my tongue, my sisters with sound supple lick lips, thick molasses. My mama care Coca-Cola bring bottle bubble over from the wayfield on Columbia Drive. Make way out of no way, mama medicine. Like mama make better, like repair. Kool-Aid prayers in the midnight hour. Years back, I remember opening her refrigerator door. Red top with tin foil, lifted the silver veil and drank. Enough for me to feel something, but not enough for her to tell. So there my mouth where hers once was sharp cold can I sipped until I felt the better she knew the better she knew my mama preach peach tree outside her house in Kingston Georgia she take root and reach elixirs into us she rescue give us air she rise rings 100 years old out her hands her branches teach touch the small we hold and lungs too full to move miracle my mama tell the soil to drain out to the lung to let go, let go, 
let go amazing knuckles remind me of hollows or pecan colored burls hands mold out the memories my flesh formed libation leaping out of lunar wombs and Sonia said with a song round my waist, tremble like a newborn child troubled with new breaths. And my singing becomes the only sound of a blue black magical woman walking womb right, walking loud with mornings, walking, making pilgrimage to herself, walking. So that's me and Sonia. <laughs> um, and so now I believe we're going to lead into our last free write of this workshop. Um, and I thank you for sticking with me this far along. Um, we're almost done. And so on this last free write, it's gonna be a little longer than the one before, probably about eight minutes. Um, this is a free write. This is nonstop. We're just going at it, you know? <laughs> there are rules to free writes, a couple which I wanna share with you um right as we begin um but some key guides is to keep your pen or pencil your writing utensil moving the entire time instead of crossing out or erasing begin again embrace your own voice and if you don't know what's right start with what you hear now this can be like your own what you're hearing in your own environment or what you just hear in your head or it can be, you know, inspired by the lyrics that I will be playing at the time. And so, some other rules and just like nice insights for free writing are, don't pause to reread what you've already written. Don't try to control what you're saying. Don't cross out and do not erase especially. That's editing, not writing. And even if you write something you didn't mean to, leave it. Don't worry about your spelling, punctuation, or grammar. Don't even care about staying within the margins or lines of the page. Do what you need to. And with that, lose control. Don't think, don't be logical. And lastly, take risks. If something comes up in your writing that is scary or unexpected or vulnerable, don't be afraid of it. It probably has a lot of energy. And so the two prompts for this free write are one, choose a moment from your present, past, or imagined future where love is. How do you feel? Who is there? What sounds are they? Paint the images with feeling and the feeling with your words. What is something that makes you feel connected to yourself, your kin and your ancestors? Write about it, but without specifically naming what it is. Allow your reader to guess. And then after this free write, there's gonna be an opportunity for reflection, self-reflection, um, unless you're doing this with a group of people. You just think about what this exercise was like for you. What did you enjoy about it? What made you feel uncomfortable? And so with that, I'm going to turn on some jams last time and we'll be back in eight minutes.
survive still got time my partner in crime hoping you'll love me till we die take me home this may be real love real love take me home this may Hoping to find my way home This place I don't know Now you're a brick road to follow oh, 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 yeah. make real love real love take me home let's make real love real love take me home let's make real love real love Didn't know it lead to you. I go 
So, we're nearing the end of our time together. Um, what was this exercise like for me? I think at first I was, I almost forgot it was a free write, but I was steadily writing. And then once I remember that it was a free write, I kind of like, I didn't like panic but I was like dang I can't stop writing and so then my hand started hurting and I was like ah and my handwriting as you can see got real messy <laughs> towards the end um but I enjoy I feel like free writing is so great because it's just there's no in the best free writes there's no filter you know it's just out and you go back and you're like, wow, that's really what I had to say. And I think it's always good for writers to reflect on what they have to say because it's constantly people telling you or people showing you or you seeing what you think people want to hear. Even in your other like regular, you know, non-writing related relationships, like with your family, with your friends, with your lovers, with everyone. You know, I think there becomes time when we have to distinguish what we think people want to hear with what we have to say. And I think that is a very, very freeing act of love for oneself. And so with that, here's a little doodle by this person's Instagram. M-O-S-A-I-C-E-Y-E, -E. shout out to them. And so, yeah, here I want to say thank you so much for your time, for your openness, for your energy. It's not easy. It's not easy. And for the people who say it is easy, For the people who say it is easy, <laughs> that's all I can say. But for those of you who don't find it easy, I'm here to affirm with you that no, sometimes it's not. Writing is a practice, it always is. Um, and I just hope that this helped feed your practice in ways that you didn't know it could. And this is also something that you can always return to. You know, your relationship to love and to yourself and to others is constantly changing, you know. But this is an awesome, I think, workshop to return to when it's necessary for you to ground yourself, to remember why you write in the first place, and also to care for yourself as a writer. You know, this wasn't an activity where you're, you were really meant to come out with anything that could be published or would go anywhere besides your personal journal or your receipts or wherever you write. Um, this was just for you. And so here I am wishing you all well, hoping that you continue to do things every now and then that are just for you. And I've included my Instagram and my email and everyone else, you know how to reach me. <laughs> um, so thank you. And thank you, Shantae, for inviting me. Thank you, Bryn. Thank you so much, Bryn Evans, for being the special guest for Bring a Holding Chair and bringing your chair to the table. Just, I know I'm not personally a writer, but I feel that any and all writers and artists who are going to watch this video and workshop will just walk away feeling renewed and ready to continue, you know, writing with intention and care. 
I know I did. Um, I also want to thank you, Bryn, for like extending this space, giving affirmation and grace to our audience. And just thank you for your authenticity as you shared your experience and knowledge. Just hopefully this won't be the last we'll see you here on Bring a Folding Chair. I will get you back again. Um, for my audience, as usual, I'm just going to put any links to any background information Bryn has discussed in our YouTube and our Instagram description. I want you all to make sure to, as Bryn said, follow up with her and check out her social media pages at Bryn Evans underscore on Instagram and Twitter. And just so you know, Bryn and Folding Share has a lot more content planned for the future. So don't forget to follow BAFC on Instagram at bring underscore a underscore folding underscore chair and at YouTube at bring a folding chair. If you have any suggestions for topics and guest speakers, you know what to do. Go put it in our suggestions box. And so I thank you for watching and being in this workshop and being in this space. And I thank Bryn once again for extending this space to us all. So peace. <laughs>